Our last guest this morning is Ronya Man, an Israeli actress. Uh, she is uh, uh, she's been uh, a lot of things. Uh, worked in with Africa Magic and Iroko TV. We'll be here to talk to her about the career. That le that legit looked like a wedding. <laughs> Didn't it? Yes, it did. Mm. Wait, maybe, no, I don't maybe on set? Or where did you eat some of that on perhaps, set? There's perhaps. a saying that's, that goes, when it seems too good to be true, mm. it often is too good to be true. Mm. Mm. So, what made you say that? Um, after your midnight text, which Mary sent oh, me last gosh. night. It's a lie. It's Mary does a, this thing. What, she can't live without me. You? But it's okay. It's okay. No, after your okay. midnight text, I realized that I slept so well into the night and into the morning. By the time I was coming into consciousness, something was telling me that, this sleep is, this is weekend sleep you're sleeping like, this is so delicious. Don't you, don't you use an, don't an alarm. So I, I, my alarm normally does, my, my phone was dead. For some reason, I forgot to charge it last this night. Happened However, I once. have a biological clock. No, not, not the kind of wind free. Biological no, not the clock. <laughs> wind free, I was going to say that. Not that kind of clock. I have a regulating, reg, self-regulating clock in me that actually would wake me up before I Before. You know, so normally it happens work. when you have used an alarm for a very long time. Yeah. You notice that when you open your eye, you just look, oh, it's two minutes to my alarm. Mm. It's three minutes to my alarm yeah, or something. Yeah, exactly. It but it didn't work this time. But it happens. Mike's alarm. You need the rest. Does it ever work? Does it? You the rest. <laughs> Anyways, so, you know, yeah, case. cool, great. Yeah, at least you are here. Yeah. Thank you, you very know, much. You know, yesterday we spoke about July 4th and... Uh -huh. mm. Uh, later on in the day, some sad events. And I'm wondering when, how you were celebrating the country and then a shooter just goes on the spree yeah. and all of that. Quite very sad day. I felt, um, you know, and, and then, of course, the issues about uh, different, when things happen, different kinds of shooters, when you talk about, uh, okay, hey, a particular race and all of that, it comes into, you know, into consideration and all of that. But, uh, you know, it was quite sad that people come together to celebrate something. Uh, something that unites people, and mm -hmm. uh, they lose their lives. Six people lost their lives over 15 or... <coughs> no, it's, un it's, a, it's very unfortunate, and mostly I would think that the security agencies would pick these very uh, um, important dates and note that they have to watch out. Like, we do that here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they prepared for all of that, but so, you, can't, you can't win them all. I, I'm actually sure they prepared, just as you said. But you see, the reality is America is playing with fire. Mm. The UK was able to realize this in time and quickly cut down on certain things. Mm -hmm. That's why, unfortunately, we still have knife fights and the rest. But guns, like, yeah. you can shoot from a far range. It's really dangerous that people have access to guns. And it's, it's unfortunate because, okay, now, there's a new law that says that, in, in New York now, there's actually a new law that says that you have to show your social media... Um, history oh. for about three years oh. before you can get a gun license and all that. But whether or not, I, I believe guns should be in the arm um, in, in the hands of law enforcement agents. Isn't that interesting how social media has become something that is is become a very relevant part of our documentation? Because it's like your diary. It is like your diary. It is yes. to some yes. people. Not everyone will put stuff out there. Of course. But we, you find that most of these people that do this, they they, they, they tend to leave a trail. Yeah. Mm. And, or even if it's not online, sometimes maybe you go to their system. Yes. Yeah, so they tend to, uh, you know, it's something like maybe something they've been holding up, and you know, they tend to want to talk about it maybe to themselves or to the world. Mm. So that is that is that is yes. one step in the right direction. It's a very small one, but it's a step. So sometimes even just one line, like or maybe a comment yeah. on a, a particular comment, yeah, post. Exactly. Exactly. Do you understand? That's exactly. why if you're if on Twitter, you see. Tweets and replies. People don't know that that tweets and replies. It shows a lot, exactly. not just your and, tweets. Uh, you know, talking about social media, I would want to say that as much as possible, maybe if you're angry and trying to respond to something, always try to ensure that whatever you put is something that you can always defend. Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? Don't let something, don't put up something that is out of your character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to, you know, sit back, okay, if I don't delete this or if it's deleted and somebody would calls it back, Mm -hmm. Would I say this is me? The internet never forgets. They always will call it back. Don't think mm -hmm. that you deleting it means it's gone forever. Time for the news update on Wake Up Nigeria. I am Mary Bashua Alimi. We begin in Ondo State, where the police command says it has arrested a notorious cultist, Oluwa Tosi who escaped in a jailbreak in Owo last March. Spokesperson of the state police command, Fumilayo Odulami, while parading the suspects at the police headquarters, said the detectives have been on the trail of the notorious cultist known as 4G because of his shooting skills. Mrs. Odulami said the cultist who escaped from our prison with six others has been on the wanted list of the command for a very long time after escaping from the prison. She added that the suspect and the leader of Aie Cult Group was arrested in his hideout at Ibokoda area of the state. 
This morning, there was an information that got to the police at Ibokoda Division that one of the convicts that escaped during jailbreak, Ikwe Melotosin, popularly known as 4G Network, was in town. Immediately, the police, uh, the DPU and some of his men mobilized to the area. And of course, we were fortunate enough to arrest him. He was caught in a socket where he was hiding. Courtism. I was involved in courtism as well. That was where I was arrested. So I was taken down to anti courtism from there. You were like TV. TV. Just TV. I was only involved in TV uh, killing. I was only involved in. in so let's turn our attention to the United States where six persons have been shot dead at the Independence Day Parade near the U.S. city of Chicago. The sad event happened on the day the United States is marking its uh, Independence Day. The event in Highland Park in uh, Chicago's suburb uh, was suddenly halted about 10 minutes after it began when several shots were heard. Police officials said they were still searching for a white man aged 18 to 20, described as armed and dangerous. City authorities said 24 people have now been hospitalized. Residents have been urged to stay at home and contact their loved ones to make sure they are safe. Earlier, there were parades to mark the day as citizens in their numbers trooped out to have a glimpse of the colorful displays of both military and civilian participants. Sounds from several wind and strings instruments added more glamour to the event as some citizens were seen capturing the moment on their mobile phones. The United States celebrated its 246th Independence Day on July 4, 2022. It marks the day when America declared its independence from Great Britain. Well, that's it on the news update to the on Wake Up Nigeria. There's so much more. Stay with us. And you're welcome. It's time now for the dailies. Let's find out exactly what you're going to be waking up to. The headlines, that is, for today, Tuesday. It's the uh, first full week, let's say, for the month of July. And this is what you will meet for the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. Vice President Slot, Afeni Fair, MDF's Islamic cleric reject Muslim Muslim ticket. Say promoters don't wish Nigeria well. Action will destroy ABC. Political exigency favor it, says Yerima. At the top of the Daily Sun, INEC expresses worry as uh, arsonists attack Enugu office. Let's take a look at the bottom of the page here. Amoteku will go after terrorists in Southwest Forest, says Akerdulu, says attack on church will never happen again in the region, insists state police is always, or rather is answer to current uh, situation uh, of insecurity. And at the very bottom there, 52 Edo communities shot NDPC office with coffin, that on page 28. Let's take a look now at our next daily, and that is... The Guardian newspaper, front and center, this big headline here, despite assurance, patrol queues worsen in Lagos and Abuja. Worst days ahead, stakeholders fear, PPMC agreed to supply products to, uh, to um, us directly, say marketers, and NATO warns members against smuggling. Uh, NMDPRA and IPMAN moved to steady PMS price at 165 naira per liter. Also at the top of the Guardian newspaper, Niger tasks new ECOWAS leadership on lingering issues and Ohane's anti crisis collapsed security as DRI receipts call for state police. On page four, over 15,000 Nigerian Muslim pilgrims stranded as uh, Saudi Arabia extends uh, airlifting and 15 years after ex-bankers struggle for terminal benefits. That's a sad situation there. Let's see what the Punch newspaper has for us this morning. And the first headline that you find, 20 directors jostled to replace fired AGF. Um, Anamekwe deployed, redeployed to, FR, to FCSC as director, circular seeks Idris replacement, sacked AGF to face disciplinary committee after EFCC probe, says ANAN. And INEC laments as arsonists burn in a office. And a look at the photo story there shows a picture of the burned office. Bandits kidnap Kaduna priest and the police free Italian cleric. Traffic light. How policemen, last month officers, extort motorists in Lagos communities. You might want to read that on page four and five. And finally, for today, page 20 here, 
FG issues guideline to retain oil sector spending in Nigeria. And that's it for the dailies this morning. Hope you find uh, a daily and maybe share with us what you think about any of the stories. Use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Oh Welcome, and it's time for What's Up and About. Now, I'm about to tell a very interesting tale, a regaling tale, and I'm going to please beg Mary tale. to put a hold on her filters because this concerns somebody that we all love. Don't put a hold, Mary. <laughs> Over the weekend, one of our producers here, Mr. Francis, uh, was on a trip. He uh, actually um, went to his uh, eastern part of the country um, for something. Uh, I don't know. He flew this time. He flew this <laughs> You are me. And they were talking about me. <laughs> so this time, Mr. Francis decided to fly. Mr. Francis that we know does not fly. Mr. Francis would rather drive his pilot. <laughs> but this time, this time he said he has to fly. Uh, so Francis went to the airport. No, you know, he suddenly realized he's old. He cannot fight. Let's not do this, Francis. You know he can't. He can't. He can't. Re he can't respond. So yeah. let's, 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 let's That's why it's best to do filter, it now. Filter. Okay. Filter. <clears throat> so Francis flew this time, and um, after they took off from Lagos, midway into the flight, 20 minutes, <laughs> Mr. Francis reported that the pilot said, "Excuse me, uh, we are reporting." No, 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 a... Before that. Before what? that. What? He said the plane. Pause. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, you, no it's not pause for the announcement. You spoiled it. You <laughs> just spoiled it. You spoiled it. Francis says, no. the pilot comes on and says, uh, excuse me, sorry, uh, we have to report that we will not be able to commence our or continue our journey to Edubu, I think. Uh, only we we're going to have to turn around because we have mechanical force. And then that was when Francis said that in those 20 minutes when the plane was shaking, they paused. They paused. <laughs> I think what that one in the be, air. What was getting in his mind that they played? I, I did you talk like a camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, no, no. But, uh, but you know, you don't get to You get to get Come on, yeah. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> I'm dying. You know, you know why this thing is really funny? You know because you know, I have pilot friends. So I'm just imagining a pilot Ooh. in that situation. What is going through his own uh, head as well? So. But that's the real issue. Please, Mike, yeah, go the ahead. Issue here, <laughs> <laughs> the issue here would have to be uh, the aviation industry in Nigeria. Nigeria. Uh. There are too many reports. Mm. Um, I know we, we, it's, it's, it's cool. We were guys. I, I heard so once, guys, once we know that you are safe, we can make a joke out of anything. That is us. Mm. But the aviation industry, really, we need to declare a state of emergency there because these issues are not isolated. They have become too frequent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, for so, me, oh, go ahead. Okay. So, so the thing with the aviation um, industry is there's a lot more to it than we see. On the one hand, the aviation industry is running on debts, realistically. Mm. If we are supposed to even talk about the pricing of tickets, for the airlines to stay afloat, they need to be charging 300,000 naira per trip. Wow. Considering exchange rates, the cost of um, transport of uh, fuel mm -hmm. and all other exigencies, mm -hmm. they are barely managing. In fact, they are not staying afloat. I'm, so I'm, I'm not predicting negatively, but there might be an aviation crisis in Nigeria in 2020. We already have a, a road crisis anyway. Exactly. So I really don't know how we're going to cope. Country. So let me just establish that fact. <laughs> However... Oh, you're not done. Okay. <laughs> However, we also have to look at, you know, other factors involved. We cannot manage engine like you will manage mode. No, okay, road transport, you can stop and say, ah, it's like we're going to call mechanics. It stopped. <laughs> the way it stopped me there, and Mr. President saying his last prayers. Now, that's what concerns me the state of the people inside of the it, craft. It, so... You have no idea what, it's, what it is like to be faced with your own mortality. Yeah. Just look at it in front of you and think that this is the end. Yeah. If mm. I were in a better society, I bet you I would sue. Mm. And I'm thinking that this is the trauma that people who were in that aircraft must have gone through. Mm. Uh, Francis reported that uh, people started praying, people were agitated, people were scared, people didn't know, people were losing their minds. You have to consider these customers, these passengers, that this is what you're putting them through. Mm. Um, so I'm, uh, it, 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 I actually asked myself, what would I do? Well, I've been in that situation mm. a yeah. couple yeah. of times. A few times, yeah. yes, I have as well. At, you know, at the point where you get to contemplate, where you are contemplating, where you have time to contemplate, 20 minutes in the air, not fear, contemplate and, um, what my life has been, what's going to not be in the next few seconds. That trauma. At least those oh ones was 20 minutes into the, into the air. How about the ones that you get to your destination? destination to, uh, you yes. can't land. Yes. And then you go right back to where yeah. you came from. To where you came yes. from. So my point is this. Look, we should do all we can. Yes. This is a, it's, it's not a private sector driven, it's, it's not, not an initiative so. that the private sector mm. can drive. 
the government really has yes, to come in. Indeed. Something has to be done about our aviation sector yeah. mm. as soon as possible. Not something has to be done. Yeah. Uh, like you said, almost everybody at one time or the other, we've gone through this thing. In fact, you know, and it's not a, it's not, it's not, I mean, a lot of people have aerophobia now because of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't want to fly mm -hmm. because of this. But then you, you come to our lands, the, the is ransom you add to your transport fare. I had the biggest you fear. You add three now. I had the ransom biggest fear of flying for the longest time. Remember the air crash, uh, the last one, uh, 2001. We had the anniversary only just last month. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, the that, Dana Airline one yes. from Abuja to Lagos. Mm. Yeah. So I have a very crazy story. Mm. Um, related me. Mm. Yeah. So at the time I wasn't married. My girlfriend says to me, "Hey, what are you flying with?" I say, "I fly with this other airline." She's like, "And why did you fly with this other airline? They're faster. They're much more efficient. And truly, they were very efficient." On uh, my return trip from Abuja, uh, my, my airline was late by many hours, but Dana Airline actually took off, you know, right on time. And then while we're complaining uh, at the boarding gate, we realized that, you know, we actually boarded and came back and we are like, why are people crying? They're like, the airline which just took off right now just crashed. Wow. Now think about it. That was the you airline I was supposed I would have girl. been in. It could have been anybody. I had let my girlfriend. It's the same thing it. with buses, vehicles. It could happen at any time to anybody. It's insane. But hey, as you said, um, it's important for the government to, to do something intervene about it. in this sector. Us, it's please, very, very important. Please. We're All talking right. about Ooh. lives here. We'll just take this time out now. We'll be back after this. Carry your parachutes when oh, you're somebody. flying. Welcome to the kitchen this beautiful morning on Wake Up Nigeria. Breakfast this morning will be prepared by the one and only Chef C. You. How are you doing today? I'm good. Okay. I'm doing great. I can't wait to see what you want to make for us today. So what is it? What are we having for breakfast? Okay, we're having a boiled plantain. Mm. Um, boiled plantain with a boiled um, um, egg sauce. Boiled plantain with egg with sauce. Egg but sauce. locally, it's just good for this kind of weather. Ah, good for the weather. Okay. So let's uh, talk about the ingredients. What are we making use of? So oh, I see what you did here. TVC, TVC, TVC. Can you make it out? Can you make it out? Check it out. Okay, so let's yeah. talk about it, okay? So this is actually egg on a sandwich. I'm going to juice with, um, this is seasoning cube. Okay. This is, oh, this is seasoning cube you made the TVC out of. Exactly. Oh, okay. So this is salt. Okay. This is scent leaf. Um, carrots, like okay. a bit of a veggies into it. Okay. Then the fresh pepper. Okay. Then palm oil. oil. Palm oil. Okay. Then the plantain. Okay. And of course the onions as the well. Onions, yeah. So we have love with salt <laughs> for your heart. Yeah. <laughs> so don't take it too much so you can stay alive. Ah, see me. See me. I just rhymed. Ah, I didn't even rhyme again. Okay. All right. So what's the process like? Run me through it. <laughs> so I'm going to do a prep on this. Okay. Just peel it up and put okay. it on the. So you peel the, peel the, the plantain. plantain and boil okay. it with water. You, you, after peeling it, you're going to boil it with water, right? Yes. Okay. Then after boiling it, what happens? Then I prepare the sauce. Okay. This is fine? Okay. 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 So you prepare the sauce. Yeah. How will you prepare the sauce? What's the process? Yeah, the, fry, the oil first. Okay. The red first. oil first. Okay. Then the, um, the onions. onions okay. goes in. Okay. Then the pepper. Okay. And uh, you wait a little bit. The seasoning cube, the salt, and the, the last thing will be the... Um, Decently. Decently. So what happens with the carrots? The carrot will just be like a Okay, for garnishing. Garnishing, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. So the scent leaves are going to go this time into sure. the food, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. It seems like a really simple recipe, if you yeah, ask me. Simple. It seems really very simple. Easy. Okay, so uh, the entire process should take like 15 minutes. 10 minutes at 10 most. minutes. Yeah. So if I want to add my own, like, um, for example, if I want to... Mm. Tone down the seasoning cubes. Can I replace it with some um, crayfish and um, um, what's it called now? Locust beans. Yeah, sure. I can. Sure, it's part of it. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's okay. So it's okay to also add ginger and garlic, or does it ruin the meal? Depends on who, right? Oh, okay. Mm. Some people don't Depends like ginger me, and garlic. This is purely local. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. All right, so we'll get the plantain ready. Okay. Um, just, just out of curiosity, how much did the plantain cost? Mm. I know it's unripe, so unripe is sometimes uh, a little cheaper. That's a 500 now. 500 for yeah, how so many pieces? Three pieces. Three, th 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 three <laughs> pieces. Yeah, just three pieces. You know, I actually wonder why things are so expensive. I know we have issues with farming now, and ah, well, it's like we'll start gardening, you know, food gardening. Did, or did this all come from your garden? Oh, really? 
Not really. Yeah, okay, I'm be, the lead suspect this one came from your garden, Sha. Yeah, sure. It's the deed. Eh? Yeah. I figured as much. Okay, so let's see how you're going to cut this plantain. Is it going to be in cubes or regular slices, or you're going to leave it whole? Yeah, in cube, in dice. In cubes. Yeah, okay, dice. so you're going to dice it. Yes. Okay, let me get you a plate to put it in. So besides um, plantain, are there other things one can include in this? Yeah, you can either use it because the sauce is for either plantain, yam, or rice. Rice? Yes. Okay, so you can do this sauce with the rice as, with sure. rice as well. very well. Okay, so you can use pasta, is it possible? Will pasta work? Not really. Not the way the Not dish the is supposed way to go. It's supposed to come out. Okay. okay. Yeah, but, but the plantain is just boiled on the side. The sauce is separate. Yes. Oh, so it's not as if you're going to still put them together no, as in no, one no, pot no. dish. It's just, not. Yeah. No. Oh, just separate. Just the separate one, the sauce and the plantain. The Does bowl. it have to be on ripe plantain? It's for this not particular really dish? It's a shallow um, ripe, as you can see. It mustn't really be the black and uh, unripe one. Okay. okay. Or it should be maybe boiled kind of a, a little bit ripe. Okay, yeah. okay, so a little ripe, just not uh, particularly yeah. ripe. Okay, and with that, uh, we'll go join Mazino now. He's uh, about to have a conversation. Hi, Mazino. Oh, thank you very much, Mary. I just realized that we're wearing the same shade of blue. Mary, have you been in my wardrobe? So I'm just going to put it out there uh -huh. that Mazino's jacket is not the blue that the camera is catching. What? What? There's a so, filter. I am going to find a way to get the correct color and post it <laughs> on my status. So look out for it on Instagram. Listen, uh, Mr. Shegun, that's our director. Whatever filter you're using on me today, keep it going. <laughs> All right, tell you guys what. We're joined by Caroline Popola right now, a uh, representative from Alpha Global. Now, it's a leading childcare solutions provider committed to meeting the needs of children between the ages of three months to five years by supporting their personal development in conducive environments. Now, they have been providing childcare um, for the past 16 years to over 500 children every single week. And Caroline, you are here with us. Grand. Oh, hello. <laughs> I see you two are wearing blue uh -huh. and I've got green. Green, that's fine. Thank I you for I complimenting. Come your wardrobe. You should actually. <laughs> blend in nice you do. Now, by the way, Caroline hasn't stopped laughing since she's gotten here this morning. So we're going to hope to get serious as we talk yeah. about creating better awareness for child care givers in Nigeria. We're also going to talk about the program that you have going yeah. on very soon. Yeah. But also wanted to point the fact that Caroline only just landed herself. So that story we're telling from before I don't know if she experienced it, but... I know, but my PJ's on. PJ's on. She's still got her PJ's <laughs> on. Well, you're welcome to back to Nigeria. Thank you so much you only for just came in on. from the UK, and yeah. this is your first stop. Literally. Literally. This is my first stop. Good to so, have you here. And I think I'm looking good. You are looking... <laughs> girl, you are. Right. <laughs> All right, yes. so let's talk childcare. Let's talk about um, creating awareness for caregivers themselves. You did point uh, out that the, we can actually help stop instances of child molestation mm. only if we know better. And the first people who are well, kind of like in that hierarchy would be the child caregivers. It could be parents, yeah. it could be professional caregivers yeah. themselves. Yeah. But tell us about this, please, the endeavor. So, like I said, thank you so much. We have a program next Saturday and literally it's aimed towards child care practitioners or educators as we know them, um, parents and caregivers, literally to understand, like I said, to know better is to do better. And for us, it's very, very important. We've done so well, and we're grateful to him up there, that in the last 18 years, where we've worked in the UK with children, we've done brilliantly. And I just felt it's about time we come in, rather than joining the, the conversation or complaining and not being part of the solution finders, they're excellent practitioners in here in Nigeria. And the best thing is, let's join forces together, let's collaborate together to really understand the fact that if you do well as practitioners, the point of contact is you first. Mm -hmm. Parents come to you first with their children, and if they came in, for example, and said to you, oh, um, my child, I had to ch slap my child by, uh, around the face because of ABC, mm -hmm. um, you're able to s tell them, like, no, it's called abuse, it's not acceptable. So oh. that's just the... So you see there that now. <laughs> Now, that's the fine line where parents need to know what practitioners ought to know professionally. So how can parents be sure that these are um, what I should look out in proper practitioners? What should parents look out for? So, and, and this is where, for parents, you need to understand what are your values. Mm -hmm. If you know your values and your expectations, then you know what providers to go to because you have set values that you want instilled in your child 
and at the same time, you're looking for practitioners that really have those values to instill in your child. Mm -hmm. So it's having to marry both together and say, all right, this person or this childcare practitioner or this school or this educator fits into what I believe or we believe as a family. Mm -hmm. And then we know we go for that. So for example, I mean, I had an Insta Live recently, um, last week or this week, and one of the ladies being, she, she's in Gambia, so we're reaching out to five African countries, including Nigeria, and she's coming on the program. And she literally said 22 years ago when she started, if you talked about early years, because we're talking about children between the ages of zero to five years old. Mm -hmm. If you talk about early years, they, people just look at you and think, oh, what's that? There's no need. It's a waste of money. Mm -hmm. But that's the informative year, age. That's mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. you get to form them, develop them, yeah. stimulate them for them to be better adults. Mm -hmm. So if we don't get it right, which is nicely leads me to the theme of the program, which is starting early, starting right. Mm -hmm. If you start early, you get it right because you don't want to raise crazy adults. Yeah. And the world is what it is at the moment. We need to change what we're bringing up. Now, for practitioners, it must be very difficult because the fact is while you have a set principle or, you know, professional uh, um, uh, principle, you have different parents who have different uh, uh, principles themselves. And you are that meeting point. So how do you weld all these demands from and, the parents and, for and, their kids, yes. which is they're very passionate about, yes. in one yes. single practice? It's so easy. Honestly, if you're passionate about what you do, if you haven't already, you can tell I'm passionate about what I do. If you're passionate about what you do, you, each child is an individual. Mm -hmm. Even in your home, for example, if yeah. you had siblings, the way you raise should be different yeah. because your needs is different from your brother's or your sister's needs. Same thing, you couldn't, you couldn't just assume because you have 20, 100 children coming to your school, you paint them with the same brush. It doesn't work like that. Mm. You look for each individual needs for a family and you deal with that. It's never too different. It's just that um, you have your set rules mm -hmm. and then a parent might decide, oh, this is the way we go to sleep, for example. I want my child to sleep at 2 o'clock. But as you practice, you sleep at one, for example, you have to cater to that child's need, that family's needs. Okay, wow. all the other children sleep at two or one o'clock, but these parents want this for their particular, and you do that. Wow. And that's because you care and you're passionate about what you do. And they're your stakeholders. You don't see them as your, cash, uh, your money machine first. Mm -hmm. They're not your money machine. You care yeah, about the child. That's, that's why you're going into it, for the care and the passion you have for the children and the family. I'll give you an instance here. So um, my wife, um, uh, my daughter comes back from school and says, oh, we were watching this cartoon in school the other day. And um, it was a very regular cartoon. We saw it when we were growing up and we thought it was okay. Well, we, I still think it's okay. But at the end of the, 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 the movie, they kissed. But mommy, you say... Kissing is bad. Why are we being shown in school a cartoon where the characters kiss? So it really got me thinking. I'm like, it was okay when I was growing up, but my wife has an issue with it. But how to explain to the caregivers, the teachers now, that this is something that our family would rather leave until latter years? Yeah. And what would you do in that instance? In that instance... Have they even first and foremost told you that they're going to be showing that in school? No, we were That's it. Told. So, for a start, that's wrong. I mean, that is wrong. So, I give an instance. We, we, on, so when it comes to our planning, mm -hmm. so planning when it comes to the curriculum and the things we're going to do with our children, what I say to my team is if you have, if, if, you're, if the parents want you to watch TV mm -hmm. or their children to watch TV at mm -hmm. a nursery, mm -hmm. They wouldn't come and pay you for it. They can easily do that at home. Yeah. So why would you? Why would I bring my child to you, pay you over a thousand five hundred pounds a month, for you to put my child in front of a screen mm. to watch them kiss? Mm. Like that's not done. Mm. So your responsibility as a parent should be, what is it you're going to be teaching my children? That's within your right to ask. Mm. You need to ask those questions, because then if they give you anything, you just take it. It doesn't work like that. You are paying for the service, and you have a right. At the same time, the caregivers have a right to say, this is what we're going to be doing, mm -hmm. and if you don't like it, how can we compromise or you take your child somewhere else? Mm -hmm. It is that simple. I think for me, it's to empower the child caregivers yeah. to say, look, if, you, if you're passionate about what you do and you're acting within the rules of the development and the mm -hmm. stimulation of the child you're looking after... There's no reason why parents won't come into bed with you. All right. Well, that's nice. Let, let's talk about the project here yes. that you, you're here for um, this month. So um, it's what again? <laughs> 
So we, it's a conference for early years child care practitioners, mm -hmm. and it's called the theme is starting early, starting right starting because of early. the starting early, starting right. So to the to different different age um, age groups, and um, just to empower the parents, encourage, um, enlighten, educate parents, child care practitioners to do better and to know better. When That's is it what it's, hold? it's on Saturday the night. So this Saturday, mm -hmm. I know we have a holiday, a long holiday coming up. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't affect you from coming. Yeah. You come and learn. You know, so it's on Saturday. Parents are welcome. Parents are welcome. Caregiving. Registration is free oh. because we have incredible people, the speakers that are coming in and they've paid the price. We're paying the nice. price, nice. you know, so you can come for free. But well, wow. parents are welcome. Practitioners are welcome. Are welcome. We've got over 800 people this registered already. Where? It's happening in Lekki, and I'm going to try and pronounce the place. Colos Colosium, Colosium. Colosium. <laughs> Lekki Colosium. <laughs> That's <okay>. where it is. <laughs> Caroline, <laughs> fantastic. Thank you for coming. And I've taken a leaf from what you said. I think I will be contacting the school. My wife has already done so, but I think I will be letting them know as professionally as you have let me know Let's what see. their rights are and what my rights is as a parent. You make sure you sit with them and yes, just say, will. look, what is it you're teaching us this year? Yeah. We want to be a part of this learning that you're instilling Fantastic. in our children, and that's what it is. Caroline, thank, thank you, you very so much. much for See, me. it's not that <laughs> difficult now, is it? <laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much for coming. Do stay tuned. Wake Up Nigeria continues right after this. Welcome back to the kitchen right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Breakfast is coming together nicely. And of course, Chef C is still in charge. You see those knife skills? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Only chefs know how to do that thing until the day you slice your finger. You'll be thinking you're a chef. <laughs> okay, so what are we having for breakfast for those just tuning in? Yeah, we're having boiled yam and uh, sauce egg, um, yes. kind of a native uh, ware, infusing it with uh, like a culinary standard. Okay, so native boiled plantain with egg sauce, okay, infused with a culinary standard. Mm. A la chef, see. <laughs> okay, so um, the plantain? Yeah, it's already... On fire, okay, spoiled. Okay. So, I'm okay. gonna shift the water off, okay. Okay, this, uh, yeah. so when you sieve it, is it bold? It's bold. Oh, it's bold. It doesn't take long to no, boil, it shouldn't be up to two minutes. Why? Um, that's like eating banana, <laughs> no, not exactly. Like size. So, if, if I have plantain and all, all I get to do is boil it for two minutes, does it qualify as bold? Sure. I don't know. But do you boil your plantain for like two, three minutes and, you know, have it ready? Tell us about it. Just send us a message on social media at TVC Connect, hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Do you do the chef C type of boiling of your plantain? And I'm actually wondering how it's going to taste at the end of the show. Uh, so, chef C, let's see what it looks like. So, this is it. It looks soft. It looks ready to eat, as a matter of fact. It looks quite soft. Hmm. I should have more faith in Chef C, huh? <laughs> okay, so let's get started with the sauce. So, so right now, first? this is what goes in the onions. Okay, so you're going to cut the onions yes, off. I'm going to cut the onions okay. off. Okay, so the onions go in first after we put in the palm oil. Yes. Okay, so okay, just a little bit of onions. Just a little bit. Ah, I love onions so much. I could use the entire thing for this small meal. No, it's a choice. It's, uh -huh. it's veggies too, so you can. And I like it with a lot of ginger and garlic. Ah, that's a choice too. Yeah, ginger, garlic, cinnamon, cumin. Yeah, talking about cumin, you know, that's one of the things I love about the kitchen here in Wake Up Nigeria. So I had this um, jar of cumin okay. in my cupboard. Okay. I bought it with other spices okay. two years ago. I kept postponing. Okay, I'll Google. I'll Google what to do with it. I'll Google. I did not know what to do with it. And then a chef came about three weeks ago and made this amazing sauce with cumin. And since then, if I now put cumin in noodles, I don't know. I always overdo things. Yeah, the flavor <laughs> is so wonderful and it makes you want to eat more. It makes you want to eat more. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it yeah. adds flavor to your dish yeah it's it really is amazing it really is amazing so okay the, so we're getting started with this okay so the red oil goes first okay don't worry go ahead okay if we have that bit of water it's going to do shh. yeah <laughs> so palm oil first palm oil first and then okay are we going to bleach it 
Yeah, it has to be bleached for ah, just like uh, fire alarm. <laughs> okay. Not really, it's not going to bleach that much. Maybe like uh, thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay, I That's think fine. we can manage that. Mm -hmm. Or else, everybody will have to run for their lives because you just see water spraying everywhere here. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. So, so you know what? Let, let's wait for the thirty seconds yeah. to be done. Now we don't have those thirty seconds to spare now because I know Mike is already eyeing me. Say so I will not do health because you want to do 30 seconds bleaching. So Mike, take it away. What's the point of health without food? We will definitely get back to that food later on. But hey, come on, it's time for health. And today we're discussing health screening, a panacea to healthy living. We have Dr. Awojimobi Otokiti Luwakemi. Now she's a passionate and a dedicated consultant, of course, in uh, health matters and all that. It's great to have you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, so let's get straight to it. Health, what is what is what do you mean when you say screening, health screening or a screening, a screening test? What is a screening test? Uh, thank you very much. So a screening test is basically a test that is done to detect or identify potential health disorders or diseases in an individual who hasn't manifested with any clinical signs and symptoms yet. So the mm. basic of health screening is that you want to identify an apparently healthy population before they start manifesting diseases. And the goal is this, you want to detect the disease early, you want to identify disease early so mm. that you can commence early treatment and management. And this in turn will translate to a better quality of life for the patient, a better chance at cure, um, better management. Screening tests ideally are not the same thing as diagnostic tests. Mm. But what screening tests would do is to identify, I mean, after you screen a vast number of people, you can then identify the subset of uh, people who would benefit from further additional tests to rule out the presence or absence of disease. Okay, so you're talking about, now this is something that has to be done to, it's more or less like a medical survey, can I, you know, like you're taking a, 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 a community of people and all that, you're, you know, it's a general thing and all of that, yeah? All right, so how do you know that a screening test is done well? Okay, so there are certain qualities that you want to look out for mm. when you are trying to uh, do certain screening tests on people. First thing, uh, a screening test must be affordable. I mean, mm. you don't want something that is so expensive and then people really cannot benefit from it. A screening test should be readily available. You don't want something like a, a screen test only available in a certain center, mm. in a whole state or in a certain geopolitical zone. Uh, a good screening test actually should be applicable to a vast number of, of people, people okay, yes. at the same time. And a, a good screening test should be sensitive, should be able to like identify even the minutest mm. level of disease in an individual before this disease or disorder becomes clinically apparent. Mm. Also, a good, clinic, um, a good screening test should, as I said earlier, should be applicable to a vast number of people. And I think I want to commend and acknowledge the efforts of the Lagos State Government, um, what they are doing recently. We have quite a number of primary health care centers being established in certain both urban and rural areas, you know, sort of bringing health care closer to the masses. But are people enlightened about this? Yes, How I think, important it is? I think they have. We have I, quite a number of um, healthcare awareness, screening awareness. You should have, a, as a woman, you should have pap smear done once you're sexually active. Mm. As a man at a certain age, you should have your PSA checked to rule out prostate cancer. I mean, quite a number of things have been done. Okay, yes, they have been done now, but I would say that um, not so many people know about this. What, okay, what else can be done to ensure that the information about this is further, you know, disseminated to the grassroots level? Because I, I, it, it, is, it is something that it is not everybody as much as we would want. I don't think the information is out there as much as we would want. Okay, a good um, way to ensure that there's dissemination is healthcare advocacy. You advocate, mm. you're putting policies in place to ensure that, okay, it's mandatory that at a certain point in their life, at a certain age, um, a man has to undergo this certain screening test. Okay. A woman has to undergo this certain screening test. And then most importantly, grassroots. So we're talking about, you see, going back to the primary health care centers. Mm, definitely, yes. definitely. Is your surest and easiest way to get to the masses faster? Because once you have these centers 
established in rural areas and urban areas and they're nearer to people, it's more likely that people would visit them, make use of them. And then when you have trained healthcare workers, not even necessarily nurses or doctors, these mm. community health extension workers telling Volunteers, people, those volunteers ones that, yeah, exactly. that go around. Yes, that go around and they go about telling people why they need to screen and how they are going to fare better if diseases are detected even because, before they become clinically obvious and apparent. Okay, now to people who are not, who have not done a screening test, what does a screening test entail? What does it look like? Do I just go, what happens in a... An example of a screening test. Okay, so um, when you're talking about the screening test, screening tests ideally are tailored to um, specific individuals and part of the factors that you look at when you're looking at a screening test, you're looking at the gender, okay. the male or female, so they are peculiar screening tests. Peculiar test. kind yes, of tests. Yes, okay, so which, what, which one can we expatiate on so that people can just have an idea what actually happens when you go for a screening test? What okay, actually so happens? Let me give you an hypothetical example. Yes, and please. this is what happens in a lot of cases. Okay. Uh, let's say this lady, let's call her um, Funke, okay. comes in, she routinely has a mammogram done, okay. and then on one of the screening, one of the mammogram screening, a tiny node was detected. Okay. And this node is so tiny, we call it subclinical because she can't feel it herself, Yet. but okay. it was picked by the mammogram. By the mammogram, okay. okay. And then she goes on to have this node checked out, and it's discovered to be malignant, that is cancerous. That's cancerous, and yes. And immediately she has that entire node removed. Now mm. we are talking about a possible cure for this funke lady. Okay. Now imagine a situation where she doesn't have a routine mammogram done and then this node alone grows up to now become clinically obvious. Either she detects it herself or her partner detects it. So you're saying that prior to the, before the node becomes full-blown cancer, it can be taken out without... Yes, and you're talking about a cure before spread, before, before metastasis. Okay. And yeah, so for individuals with... Um, Individuals with um, previous family history, especially in first degree relatives, you want to screen them faster, you want to screen them earlier, and you want to screen them more often. Okay, now this uh, this is quite enlightening. I, 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 there's, there's good, you don't have to feel anything. No. Stand up and go for a screening that test. Is the exact. Is it free? It's not, you said it, but it's affordable. It is affordable. Okay. Okay, it's quite affordable, and then at the end of the day, you are better off. Okay, so I can just stand up, go to a primary healthcare center around me yes. and ask for a screening test depending on my gender and you know my age and all of that. They will know what definitely. kind of screening test I yes. would need. Yes. Thank you so very much, Doctor. This was quite enlightening. Uh, I would definitely find a way to go for a screening test myself. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank it was good having you. And of course, I hope you've learned something from Best One. Go for a screening test. It could really save your life. We'll take a time out now. When we get back, the second lap of the show kicks off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you make each day a memorable one. How many times have you come and seen how beautiful the show that we get for you every single day is? Fantastic, uh, get it? Definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm sure that you've come to the right place. And that is Wake Up Nigeria. It is great to have you this morning. Let's get straight to what we have this Tuesday morning. Mary's in the kitchen, all being very, very. You I know, know, Mary, how's it going in there? I was Mary. wondering if you guys are going to come here. But <laughs> So uh, watching us right now, Wake Up Nigeria. Guys, you look good together. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful, know, right? Wonderful, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. It's been a wonderful time so far. And the first one are, it's the next 45 minutes. And our job here is to ensure that you have fun all through the show. Yeah. You can catch the show live. It's on GoTV. Yeah, channel 27. Mm. And of course, you can also find us on channel uh, 49. You can mm. check, by the way. It's that easy to find us anywhere that you might be. Stream the show live as well. If you want to do that, TVC Entertainment or TV and on Facebook as well. And of course, you can download the app. It's available Android, iOS stores. Uh, you can watch us anywhere around the world. All right. So, yeah, we've got that parenting. Yeah, we've already done that, so that's fantastic. We're going to be uh, seeing some very fantastic other segments here in the show. Sex education and the uh, yeah. uh, practice, uh, practical ways to teach children with uh, Omolayo Ayodeji. Now, she's a speaker, author, certified Montessori instructor, and also a lover of children with a special need. Now, she also founded Essence for Women, uh, an online video podcast <coughs> aimed at improving the lives of women. And then we have a musical performance, fast rising gospel artist, Fred Rock, will be joining us. Uh, we will be having a performance, a wonderful one from him.
On the couch is Israeli actress Ronya Mann. Now, she is a theatre trained actress and also director who has taught drama for many years and prepped actors for auditions. She worked at the Africa Magic and also Roku TV as an assistant director and many more places as well. We can't wait to have her on so we can talk about most of her filmmaking and, uh, well, experience through her career. Now, moving on to our next story for today. Now, listen to me. I am... The sad one yesterday. Oh. The Falcons lost yesterday to uh, the Bayana Bayana. Hmm. Uh, a 2-1 loss. I wanted uh, to ask, the Bayana Bayana are not the boys, the boys. That's, no, no, that's no. the girls, the, the girls. The girls, boys are Bafana, Bafana. Bafana, Bafana, Bafana. Okay. Uh, but the yes. boys. They're not exactly a, a small team. They're not, they're not. Oh, exactly. But you see, out of, um, uh, 10, out of 10 editions of... The Alcon, that's talking about the African Women Cup of Nations, we've won nine. Out of 11, we've won nine. Mm -hmm. So we are, you know, we used to be, this is our bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, we're not also a small team to radio. But then I love, something I love about it, I love competition. I do, it doesn't make sense when one team is all this. But what pained me most yesterday was that the girl that scored the second goal, mm -hmm. she was best saying, she did it better than it. <laughs> <anybody. laughs> like, so it was intentional. Okay. Mm. She didn't do a South African dance. She did a Nigerian, Nigerian dance, dance. Just, dance. Just to knock us. Yes. Nah. She was, you, I, I don't know. When Mary's reading the sports, maybe you probably see it. At the end, she just goes, ah, oh, you want to say, ah, what's going on? Ah, that was her ah. body. Yes, you know, it's funny. Yesterday, oh, I was also geez. watching the yes, um, highlights of previous World Cups. Mm -hmm. And, ah. I was the France um, Brazil um, well, final. Uh, yes. That was 98. 98, yes. When France, France won. France 98. Oh my yes. God. Oh my God. It was mm. a very sad one. It was. I, I actually mean, felt sad watching it, but at the same time, well, that was that was that was uh, <laughs> that was. That's not, cool, it, I, I wouldn't say an introduction for Zidane, but then we were expecting Ronaldo da Lima to come up tops, but then France did it against someone one of the best Brazilian teams of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I I know that feeling. I wanted Brazil to win, but hey, come so on. So many people did. That's like the Netherlands one as well, where Definitely everybody was rooting for against Netherlands. Spain. Yes, uh, that, then, the 20 ten World Cup. I couldn't Cup. help but notice how excited you were about the Arsenal read while we were doing the news. Oh the yes, I was excited <laughs> because yeah. now we have. <laughs> yeah, I, I I a, couple of people, TV. a couple of people I behind the camera are also quite excited. You yeah. guys, yeah. keep your capes on. Yeah, <laughs> I just hope I, I, that this excitement continues this who time. And who now? Year. You see, who now? You see, who put it to Gabriel Jesus? And there's talk. We bought um, Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be our money, but it's our <laughs> She said we bought. We who is we? Check your account. Did this spend your money? This guy just shared me. Said check my account. Did See, in my account of Mister Future, he probably <laughs> come online to come and yab me this money. So please don't. Time for the news update on Wake Up Nigeria, and we begin with the fact that Nigerians may have to wait for a very long time for normalcy to return to filling stations across the country. This is so because the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers are warning that uh, fuel scarcity would not end in the country anytime soon. The union gave the warning at the 5th Quadrennial Delegates Conference of the Petroleum Tanker Drivers PTD branch of New Peng in Ibadan, or your state. Senior correspondent Sharon Ijasan reports. It's the fifth quadrennial delegate conference of the petroleum tanker drivers PTD in Ibadan, southwest Nigeria. At the event, President of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng Williams Akwurea, called on relevant authorities to fix abandoned local oil refineries across the country. He said that it is the only way Nigeria can reap the full benefits of being an oil producing country. And so for any government, for any responsive government, what they must do is to ensure that this product is refined locally. I don't know if it will really take a rocket science to build a refinery. That the only refinery we talk about today that the one built by, built during the military era. And today we are hustling to, re to, to rehabilitate them. Government must rise to its occasion, must place its priorities right. 
The National Trustee of Nopeng Salimon Oladiti commended members and leadership of the union of their support during his eight years in charge as chairman of PTD unit. While reading out his 12-point achievement in office, Oladiti expressed joy that capacity training organized for tanker drivers annually helps to reduce truck accidents in the country. You know, this is part of what reduces tanker accident along our highway. If you say you want to run, want to kill yourself, and the, the, your, um, your truck reveals to run, I think it's a wise decision taken by the union and the federal receipts department. This measure helped in a tremendous way to reduce the incidence of tanker accident on our roads. The event witnessed presentation of our awards to outstanding members and employers, including Ejiro Otarigo, who averted disaster by driving his burning tanker out of the crowded area in Delta State. Members of the association were urged to see themselves as the managers of the truck they drive. Sharon Ejastom, TVC News. That's it on the news update today on Wake Up Nigeria. There's so much more to come. Stay with us. Welcome back. And on Parenting this morning, we're discussing sex education and the practical ways to teach children. Our guest this morning is Omolayo Ayodeji. She is a speaker, author, certified Montessori instructor, and a lover of children with special needs. She also founded Essence for Women, an online video podcast aimed at improving the lives of women. You're welcome. Thank you. There's so much you are doing and all of that. Thank you uh, let, so let, much. Just, just before we get to our topic today, you are you you specialize on treating kids with special needs yes, and all of that. Yes, how okay. why did you or how did that where did that passion come from? Okay, so um, thank you for having me. Um, I came in contact with this young boy mm. before who wasn't talking, and the parents just brought brought him to me and wanted me to perform a magic. Mm. I almost said, let this boy go somewhere else, yeah. Mm. But then I thought, let's let's see what we could do, and I found out that. They make up for those things that they can't normally do, that you normally not see, all right? So, for instance, he couldn't talk, but he could sing, yeah? He could, he could make rhythms, make sounds, dance well. He could drum, mm -hmm. all right? And so I, I thought that children with special needs, there's so much more you can find out from them, you, mm -hmm. you know? It just takes a little patience, understanding, oh. and, giving, and give them timing. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for being such a person. We need more people like you. Thank you. All right, so um, our topic today is sex education and all yeah. of that. How and when is it appropriate for a parent to start talking to their kids or teaching their kids about sex? Okay, so the time is now. Any time. Uh, from, 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 from statistics, we know that children can hear sounds from the womb. Science have taught us that Definitely. they could hear yeah. sounds, yes. right? Yes. Babies can, you know, um, react to lights when there's light change, mm. all right? So it mm. means they can hear you, all right? So I think the problem really is parents are confused about what sex education is, mm. all right? So they feel that when they hear sex education, you're talking about the acts of sex. And sex education does not teach the acts of sex, but the values of sex. Hmm. Right. Please say this again. Say this again. Sex education does not teach the acts of sex, but the values of sex. The values of sex. The values like of that. sex. Okay. All right. So it means that what are the values you want to instill on your children when it comes to their sexual? We are sexual beings, and children are not different. Mm. All right. We are emotional beings. Children are not different. Mm. All right. So you want? I mean, and they learn this thing everywhere. Mm. So you want to be the first, um, first source of... Yay from. Yeah, and I mean, the right information should come from you. Mm. And then sex education goes beyond, oh, this is your private part, this is your public part, this is what you shouldn't touch. Yeah, it talks about the emotional growth. I mean, some of us stumble on what a crush meant. Mm. We didn't understand what it felt. We didn't understand what we're feeling, rather. We just thought it's a, it's a good feeling you have towards the opposite sex. Mm. All right? So sex education also involves talking about the emotional growth of your children, the physical growth of your children. A one-year-old can learn about the physical growth. Here is your breast. This is your penis. This is your vagina. There's nothing obnoxious about that. I mean, that's, 
that is the same. I mean, that's it. Penis is penis anywhere, all over the world. It is. And there, there's no big deal in telling your child this no is child. your penis. No, a one before year old. Before from somebody. Before else. they no, before they even begin to learn what other things penis are used for from somebody else. Wonderful. Now you see. But a number of parents don't even have this education or this knowledge. Yeah. So they don't even know how to pass it on. Yeah. How do the parents educate themselves first in a way that they can pass this knowledge on to their, to, to their kids? I know so, you have a book here or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That have come into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's why I wrote the book because I know that sex is an awkward conversation. I mean, I must agree that sex is an awkward conversation. I've been having this conversation with my daughters for a long time and one day, one of them just came up and said, oh, mom, it's, it's not good for boys and girls to kiss. I said, yes, it's not good for boys and girls to kiss. Only married men and women. I said, yes. I mean, I was, I was glad that she, she understood the concept already. Mm. And then she came up and said, so do you and daddy kiss? And I almost like fainted, like. <laughs> How old is she? I, I mean, she, she's seven. Okay. I mean, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I mean, I said that to say that. Yeah, I said that to say that sex is, is an awkward topic. It's sensitive, it and a lot of people want to shy away from it. But I want the parents to realize that our world is sexualized. I mean, yes. cartoons, you would see it in cartoons. Exactly. You, would, you, would, you would watch music videos and, Promo I mean, ads, everywhere. Words, almost everywhere. All right? I mean. So you, don't, you do not, like, have a choice, all right? So you need to read up. You need to realize that this is something I must do. Yeah, and that's why I wrote this book. Mm. It, it's actually a guide for parents. I like this. And, uh, something yeah. for the parents to Something for the parents, yes. So what I did was to break it down year by year. So you know the correct information you're passing to your child, you won't, you won't, under, you won't under teach and over teach, yeah? So it starts from one year. You know where to stop when your child is one year, all right? So you need to read up. You need to understand. And, and another thing is um, you need to understand your child's emotional age. Some children are older emotionally than their biological age, actually. So you could say a seven-year-old, who, who knows a lot, who's, who's smart, Who's intelligent? Who picks things very fast? You need to work with the emotional age and not the, not the biological age. Mm. Do you understand me? Mm. Because you want to, you want to um, be up to speed. And you want the child to realize, I mean, from seven years, a, a boy can have a crush on a girl. Mm. And you need to know that these are absolutely normal feelings. Don't demonize it. Let the child understand that this feeling, I know it, it feels good. I felt it. Well, I mean, we can't lie about that. I felt it. And so it's normal for you to feel this way. Then the next step is to say, this is how to go about it. How did you handle your own crush when you were, when you were younger? Those are things you could do. I mean, and if you had made errors, you know, sexual decisions that were inappropriate, it's also a good way to teach your children. Mm. And then every opportunity is an opportunity to teach sex education. You're watching a movie and there's a kiss scene. It's an opportunity to teach. You're having, you're and giving you your... tell us to go out, go inside the room. I mean, why are we going out? <laughs> but when we, when we go to e trees, we see it in movies. Yeah? Uh... All right, so before I used to tell my children to close their eyes, I don't tell them to close their eyes anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because right now, when they go out, when they visit people, they don't tell them to close their eyes. Everybody's just watching, okay? Yes, so you, you let them know that this you're watching is wrong. You know, and if you had, if you had helped to, if you had uh, bridged that gap, when your child is going through an emotional phase, when a child is being traumatized emotionally or sexually, you are going to be the first person they will talk to. Mm. And that's a good feeling as a parent. These are discussions we can have with our parents. I, I'm a sexual abuse survivor. I mean, I was sexually abused severally as a child. And um, um, so when I grew older, my, my fiancé then and, and I decided to do something for sexual abuse survivors. And I wanted to write my story. And my fiancé felt, see, let's, let's involve your parents. So they don't see your story somewhere. I wonder, oh, so this happened, this to, happened you. to you. So I, right. I called my mom and she went like, oh, so you still remember? I'm like, remember what? So apparently, my parents are aware that I was sexually abused. She actually, she, so she told me she, that she walked in on us when, once, when my uncle was sexually abusing me. Yeah, and I didn't know. I just knew that the man left the house. I mean, I was glad. That would be 
that would have been a great opportunity to talk to me about to sex about and sexual abuse. Wow. I, right? I, this is... This is quite a deep discussion. I wish we could continue, but we'll pick it up. You're with us for a month. Yeah, we'll that's pick fine. From this position next, next week. Next week, that's fine. Thank you so very much. Thank and, you for uh, having we'll me. Grease your elbows. Thank Keep you. on doing what you're doing. Thank you. Oh, welcome back. Finally, <laughs> and finally, joining us on the couch here is the Israeli actor, uh, actress Ronya Mann. Yes, I said Ronya Mann. Now she is a theatre-trained actress and also director who has taught drama for many, many years and also prepped actors for auditions. She's worked with African Magic. She's worked with Iroka TV as an assistant director. Yeah. And also director. Yes, as, as a matter of fact, uh, the directorship mm -hmm. is at uh, Housewife Productions. And nowadays, though, she spends her time mostly on fostering uh, platforms for international collaborations for Nigerian filmmakers. And she's been doing quite great at that. So, folks, it's good to have Ron, your man, with Ron, us. Ron, your man, in the welcome. Good to have you here. Good to have you Thank here, you. indeed. I've heard about you from many people, especially inside of the acting community. Mm -hmm. And uh, people say that uh, if you are an actor or actress, then they must have met you. If they haven't, then they haven't gone through with the. Uh, full gauntlet of, you know, acting in, in Nigeria. <laughs> and it makes me wonder, you are not from Nigeria, but you're mm -hmm. so active inside of the acting scene. Mm -hmm. You're an actor coach. Or mm -hmm. co what do you call Coach actor. <laughs> an acting coach. An acting coach. That's what you are. <laughs> so how have you managed to be so involved in the Nigerian uh, uh, acting sphere? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, first of all, yes, I'm an acting coach, but I work within the, the Nollywood space from all sides of the camera, that's what I call it, because, mm. um, because I work from behind the camera, like you said, I directed, I, I, I mostly have been assistant director. Okay. Um, I found that being an actress and a director is tough for me because I'm always feeling for the actor. You know, really? as a director, we, I had to like, direct this really hard rape scene. Oh. And I was just feeling for the actress. <laughs> Oh, I was wow. like feeling sorry for her, like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I was like, no, 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 no this is not for me. Um, but yeah, but and I, I did a lot of casting. I was on, uh, um, I was uh, on a casting board several times, and so <clears throat> I, uh, I got to know, you know, all sides of the industry. Mm. Um, and of course, I've been acting since 2015 or 16 in in the, in Hollywood. Mm. So. Um, and I think also uh, within my role as co-producer of the Real Time Film Festival, mm -hmm. I got to know and meet a lot of filmmakers, a lot of actors. Um, I've been fortunate to facilitate a lot of acting uh, sessions in AFRIF as well. That's the African yeah, yeah. Uh, Film Festival. So, um, so yeah. So I mean, you do what you're passionate about. You do what you're exactly. good at. True. People get to know you. That's the not wrong, yeah. Uh, most people believe more in exporting their talents from Nigeria. But here you are coming to Nigeria. What informed your interest in the first instance? Why did you decide to come to Nigeria? Was it um, something you stumbled upon or you'd visited or you'd lived here before? Why the interest? Why the interest? Please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a long story, but if I summed it up like in one word, mm. God. Ooh. Mm. Simple. How you so? just brought me here. Did you fall in love with it when you got here? Okay, so to be frank, I was here when I was a teenager. Okay. Okay. okay my dad's work brought us here. Um, and so I lived here for about four years, two out of which I was studying abroad. But I thought I knew Nigeria when I came here as an adult, right? When I came back as an adult, which was by chance. I mean, I, it wasn't planned at all. I didn't think I'd ever stumble or set foot in Nigeria again. But... Um, yeah, I came back thinking, okay, I know these people, I know this guy, I've been here. Mm. Didn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> forgive us. Forgive us, indeed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't know anything. Uh, I came, the first year was a bit rough for me. Um, I would go to like theater productions. Mm -hmm. And, because I mean, I come from theater, that's mm -hmm. my heart, right? And, and, I, I, I would sit and I'd be like, I don't understand what <laughs> Because it was pigeon, because yeah. it was Yoruba, because it was a mixture of things, because you know, you get used to the accent mm -hmm. and all that. Um, so I was fortunate to meet a lot of good people on the way. And mm -hmm. I think the first month when I started working for the Society of Performing Arts Nigeria, mm -hmm. 
uh, was when I met this wonderful man called um, Orgy, and he taught me a lot about the culture, because I was supposed to uh, direct a play. Okay. I mean, it was hard to direct a play and give an acting uh, workshop for them. And so, yeah, I, I, I got to know about, you know, the area boys and all mm. those stories and the street guys. But embedded and, inside of the Nigerian culture. Yes, yes, yes. And then my work remote. with, with uh, House 5 Productions yeah. mm. um, and reading all these scripts, you get to know the, the internal stories, you get to understand... Mm -hmm. So your involvement in the Nigerian film atmosphere, a film is fair, let's put it that way, you have coached so many people, mm -hmm. uh, people have well, a bit of your culture in them as well when it comes to acting. You also are a producer of the Real Time Film Festival as well, which has happened, well, how many times here in Nigeria now? It's, it's going to be the seventh, seventh year. This, seven, we're yeah, going for seven, so it's August. happened five times upon one time vir virtual, that's six, and then this is going to be the seventh edition. Right. But not here in Nigeria this time. Where is it happening? In, in it's, it's, it's not in Lagos, it's in it's Benin in, City. In Lagos, rather. It's happening in Benin City. Want to yeah. tell us about the Real Time Film Festival, please? Okay, so... Real Time Film Festival was founded by the renowned filmmaker Stanley Ohikware. Okay. Um, everybody in the industry knows that name because he's done amazing stuff and um, some of them have gone to Cannes Film Festival even. <clears throat> I was lucky enough to be in one of those films and to present it at the festival in Cannes. Um, Stanley is, Stanley brought me on board in 2018. <clears throat> okay. And he's originally from Benin. Mm. So last year he went back there to visit, went back to, you know, to find his roots. And um, he's also very immersed in the movement of bringing back the artifacts yeah. of Benin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, so, yeah. So he's, he, you know, Benin, Edo State has, has built a creative hub there. Mm. And of course, they want to bring Showcase back. That, you know, yes. they, want, they, they want to bring it to life. They want to bring mm -hmm. people to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Abuja Film Village is also doing yeah. something similar. But Edo State has taken it a step further and is actually in support of the festival. They're helping us with, together with Kada Cinemas mm -hmm. and the creative hub that they built there. Mm -hmm. So they're supporting the festival uh, in several ways, and um, that's why, you know, that and the connection of, uh, that Stanley has in, in, yeah, in, in Benin, Benin yeah. City. That was the, the incentive of bringing it there. And, of course, we've been, we, we've been taking RTF around for a while now. We took it to Ibadan last yeah. year mm -hmm. um, with a training session that I did together with Shegun Arinze. Oh, nice. I saw a picture of you guys standing yeah. together. Many pictures have been going through yeah. uh, from you oh, really? being involved. I mean, you're not just... You're the, you don't just stand and just say point fingers. You actually are actively involved in everything that you've put your hand to while you've been here. I believe in hands-on, practical. I mean, even when I do an acting session, my, my, my students know. Yeah. Don't come all fancy dressed. Uh -uh. I don't come fancy. Get ready, I get don't wear gritty. long earrings because we're going to work. We're going to get on that. the floor. So while you're involved in the film... I'm so sorry. I'm so excited. <laughs> while you're involved in the film festival, um, have you been to Benin? Have you... By the way, speaking of being involved, my first year producing the festival, I also did the filmmaking challenge, the 24, the 20 hour filmmaking challenge, Whoa. which was a challenge on its own, yeah. you know, yeah. being, doing both, but it, it was a lot of fun. I yeah, mean, I can imagine. It was a lot of fun. And it's happening this year again in Benin, so it's going to be amazing. Have you been there though, Benin? No, I can't wait to oh. go. <laughs> I wish I could take be, you. There, there, no, there, there's going to be a tour of the city nice. into the palace on, okay. on Saturday. So Friday, is everybody arriving. The 19th and the 20th is a tour through the city and to the Obaz Palace. And then we have an opening ceremony and as nice. we go. Okay, okay. so I've had, uh, I've had um, conversations with uh, several directors, especially lately. And most of them say, oh, I do not want to be an actor. I do not want to really be in front of the camera. And so you shared your challenge with being a director and watching something else happening mm. on the other side of the scene. How has it been for you? Because I actually wonder... For many directors, they will say, oh, I don't want to get involved with the actors. But then you're an acting coach on top of everything. So here you are directing, and you're seeing something you don't want. Yeah. Would you trust the actor to give you what you want? Or would you say, you know, I'm an acting coach, right? Do it this way, do it this way. How do you handle so, there, there, are, there were two incidents that you're reminding me of. Mm. I was 
I was assistant director on this movie called Single Moms. Okay. And there was a romantic date scene. Okay. And the director was actually pretty good. She's an actress herself, too. She's amazing. Uh, Belinda, um, Belinda Young Younger. Okay. And, um, and she goes, Rania, this isn't working. They're doing the date scene, and it's not working. I said, okay, let me go to them. And I went over. I said, guys, look at each other. Why don't I do it to you guys? Look at I'm each ready. other. I'm oh, <laughs> ready. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on. You're born ready. <clears throat> tell, us, tell, us what, tell her what to do. I probably already know. <laughs> okay. You meet actors like me all the time. Look at her. Yes. Now what? Look at her lips. Ooh. Shut, so up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Okay. Focus. Look at her lips. Imagine you want to taste her lips. Stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> you're playing. Okay. Serious. Just focus on her lips. No, no, no. Just focus on the lips. <laughs> and now taste it in your mouth. Don't show me anything. Just feel the taste in your mouth. Now you look at his lips. Mm. They are on a track. This guy is helpless. If you're on my set, I would slap you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick to daytime TV, it. please. No movies. Not me and Mary in any scene. We'll laugh all through. Imagine we'll make you. It's not we'll, with him, though. We'll make your job a living hell. This is how we get down on the floor. <laughs> Ronya, but we could see a sample of what you have to do, yeah. how you have to get into the actor's mind and how they have to actually translate yeah. what you want. And yeah, that's and very interesting. You no, know, I, I kept telling you, focus, focus, yeah. focus. It reminds me, because um, I always plea to, to actors. Let's do that real quick, because we have to give okay. you something. To, well, can Breakfast. we do that while we're... Do no, no yeah. keep going, keep going. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. we can do it while we're... <laughs> okay. okay. We can talk and eat. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, so let's go to the kitchen then. Okay. Let's move you over then while you're telling us that please. story, please. All right. So you were saying... <laughs> It's good that we're eating because I was going to say about, you know, an actor's healthy lifestyle. Thank mm. you. Yes. I'm it shows <laughs> very well. Thank there you, you go. You good? Yep. So, okay. um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, actors really need to, to focus a lot on set. And it's long hours mm. and it's sitting down a lot, especially when you're working on screen rather than on, on uh, theater, on yeah. stage. <clears throat> and so... I urge actors to do a little bit of meditation, mm. to do a little bit of exercise in the morning. I mean, I do my 20, 30 minute Pilates every morning. I can't start the day without it. Oh, fantastic. Nice. Okay. Welcome to the kitchen, Ronya. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't asked you the meaning of your name. I will ask you that one. Okay. Uh, but this I'll is breakfast. You. I have an, a, a Yoruba name that has the same meaning as my name. Oh, okay. I know it. Yeah. Okay. What is it called? Oluatoyesi. Oluatoyosi. So that's what Ronya means. Yes. Wow. Thank you. Hmm. God is worthy to be rejoiced at. Okay. <laughs> Chef C made breakfast this morning. And breakfast is boiled plantain and egg, egg sauce. sauce. Yes. yes. My favorite. You are going to enjoy this, I'm sure. Thank you, guys. Yes. <laughs> so. I didn't know I was going to get breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> There's scent leaves in it as well. So... Amazing. We need you to taste it and give us your feedback. Does pepper inside? That would be little Good. Bit. No. It wasn't no. enough. No. You want pepper now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it. Okay. Mm, I love the smell. Thanks. It's the scent leaves. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, there's good pepper inside. <laughs> I love it. I've never seen egg sauce with carrots before. Nice. Neither have I. Oh. That's beautiful. I have seen it. Mm. Jeff, that's fantastic, man. Thank you very much. Um, that's beautiful. Victoria, if you're seeing this, please take a note. <laughs> and it, it's not too oily. No, Gosh. it's not. It's I've been on set for the past <clears throat> several, several weeks. Mm -hmm. And every time they make egg sauce or meat sauce or whatever. It's, it's oily. It's swimming in oil. Yes, yeah, like, many people no like oily eggs. But today. this one is great. Thank Perfect. you for coming. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chef C. You're opening your uh, restaurant? Bar, yeah. yeah, your bar. Oh, yes. nice. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ooh. Opposite, uh, yeah, your number nine, uh, Tumba. All right. Yeah. I'm coming for free food this Sunday. All right. Ah. <laughs> Let's go. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we have somewhere to go this weekend. <laughs> we Thank do. you, Thank everybody. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. Bye. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah.